In the first part of Mirror, Mirror on the Wall, David and Sophia, a couple exploring the serene countryside, stumble upon a creepy old mansion by a forgotten lake. Intrigued by its charm, they decide to stay the night. However, their adventure takes a terrifying turn when the spirit within a massive, cracked mirror pulls David inside after he touches it. Desperate to save him, Sophia bravely enters the mirror world, only to confront the spirit that has taken on her identity while her own soul remains trapped in the mirror. Meanwhile, David remains unaware that the spirit has possessed Sophia's body in the real world. After leaving the mansion, something about Sophia was undeniably different. David noticed it in subtle ways at first. Her gestures, the way she smiled, and even her responses. But soon, the changes became too stark to ignore. Sophia, a lifelong vegan, suddenly relished meat at every meal. Her tastes in music, her habits, her demeanor. It was as if the woman he knew had been replaced by someone else. David wanted to voice his concerns but held back unsure of his suspicions. The changes were unsettling, but maybe they were just a result of the strange events at the mansion. That nagging doubt gnawed at him, but he kept it to himself. One afternoon, while they traveled through a busy small town near the old mansion, David stepped outside a shop for air while Sophia remained inside, browsing. The moment he exited, an old man appeared, standing with quiet authority. He was dressed in old-fashioned clothing, the kind that seemed to belong to a different era, and his long eyebrows gave him a distinct, almost mystical appearance. His sharp, observant eyes seemed to see straight through David. The man approached without a word at first, studying David for a moment before speaking. "'You're not from around here, are you? Visiting this town?' David, caught off guard but trying to remain polite, nodded. "'Yeah, we're just passing through.' The old man nodded knowingly, as if he had already figured that out. Tourists, then? David hesitated. Something like that. The old man's eyes narrowed, his tone still casual but with a slight edge. Where have you two been staying these past few days? David paused, puzzled by the shift in the conversation. We've been traveling. Stayed at an old mansion by a lake for one night. At the mention of the mansion, the man's expression darkened, and his eyes sharpened with recognition. He nodded slowly as if something had been confirmed. The mansion, he repeated gravely. That explains it. David's heart began to race. Explains what? The man glanced at the shop where Sophia still browsed, oblivious to the conversation. He then leaned closer to David, lowering his voice to a whisper. That's not the woman you brought with you. The spirit from that mansion's mirror, it's taken her place. David felt a chill run down his spine. His growing suspicions now had a horrifying explanation. Who are you? he asked, trying to steady his voice. Call me Uncle Sam, the man replied. If you want to save her, meet me tomorrow at noon. Bring her to the antique shop at the end of the street. We don't have much time. David stood frozen as Uncle Sam turned and walked away. He glanced back at the shop where Sophia, if that was still her, continued browsing completely unaware of the dark truth that had begun to unfold. The next day, David told Sophia that he wanted to visit the antique shop to get her opinion on a few rare pieces. She agreed without hesitation, her enthusiasm feeling strange in contrast to the woman he once knew. At noon, they entered the antique shop. Uncle Sam was already there, along with several others people David hadn't noticed before. The shopkeeper introduced an antique box to Sophia, speaking casually, but a tension hung thick in the air. Suddenly, the shopkeeper pressed his thumb against Sophia's forehead and shouted, Now! The shop's entrance slammed shut as two men dressed in robes from a distant ancient tradition appeared, closing in on Sophia. One of them was Uncle Sam. Two women, posing as customers, grabbed Sophia's arms and rubbed her skin with a strange, shimmering red ink. The men quickly moved in to help subdue her. David watched in shock as the red ink, now smeared across Sophia's forehead, began to radiate a faint light. Her scream tore through the air, but the voice that emerged wasn't hers. Let me go, she shrieked, her tone dark and unnatural. David, help me. But David knew deep down that voice wasn't Sophia's. It was something else, 
ancient and sinister. The shopkeeper opened the antique box, chanting in a language David couldn't understand. The energy in the room thickened as the chant grew louder. Sophia thrashed, but the others held firm. After several minutes, the shopkeeper snapped the box shut and Sophia went limp, unconscious. We have to return to the mansion, Uncle Sam said calmly. The box will only hold the spirit for one day. We need to rescue the real Sophia. At the mansion, the group of five, Uncle Sam, the shopkeeper, a helper, and the two women gathered before the cracked mirror that had started it all. They drew a symbol on the mirror with the same glowing red ink and began chanting once again in the strange ancient language. David held Sophia's unconscious body tightly, praying that the real Sophia was still inside. As the chanting filled the hall, the mirror began to ripple like water and cracks spread across its surface. The spirit inside thrashed, clawing at the edges of the glass, trying to break free. David felt the energy in the room shift, growing darker with each passing second. For 15 agonizing minutes, the chanting filled the grand hall. The mirror shimmered as if alive, and suddenly, Uncle Sam opened the antique box. Through it all, Uncle Sam remained calm, his voice steady as he chanted. Even as the mirror screeched and trembled, he did not waver. His confidence was the only thing grounding David as the room seemed to tear itself apart. A terrifying scream erupted from the mirror. It was the same voice, ancient, angry, and full of despair. The scream echoed through the hall, and then it seemed to be sucked back into the mirror. The voice disappeared and the mirror fell silent. Sophia stirred in David's arms, her eyes fluttering open. A flicker of the spirit's malice lingered in her gaze for a brief moment before vanishing. She gasped for breath, as if resurfacing from a nightmare. Then she looked up at him, confused but overwhelmed with emotion. Tears streamed down her face as she threw her arms around him, sobbing uncontrollably. David, I thought I'd never see you again. He held her tightly, his heart finally easing after days of fear and uncertainty. The next morning, David and Sophia returned to the antique shop to thank Uncle Sam and his friends. It was there that they learned the truth. Uncle Sam and his companions were descendants of the ancient Far Eastern priests who had imprisoned the spirit centuries ago. David asked why they didn't just destroy the mirror and end the danger forever. Uncle Sam smiled faintly. If there is no mirror, there is no prison. The spirit would be free. David and Sophia left the village soon after, their hearts grateful for their lives, but haunted by the knowledge that the spirit remained, still trapped in the mansion's mirror, waiting for another chance to escape. Thanks for diving into the shadows with us. If you enjoyed this story, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more spine-chilling tales. Stay curious, stay safe, and remember, sometimes the truth is scarier than fiction. Until next time, sleep tight if you can.